be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You can come up here and sit in the front now. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. As I looked over this passage from this week, I wondered, how can I say anything new about a story that everybody knows? Right? If you've never been to church, if you've been to church every Christmas, you still know the story. Because people around you have told you the story. You've heard it over and over again, right? There's, there's these two people, and they're in this barn-like thing, and they have a baby, and there's shepherds and sheep, and there's... Most of our renditions include wise men. Our wise men are still over there because they haven't arrived yet. Right? This is a story we think we know. We, we've heard all the details, and we know all about it, right? The baby was born in a barn in a feed trough, in a manger. And how many of you have ever been in a barn? Is, is it, it's said it was a silent, we're gonna sing a little bit of silent night. Is a barn quiet? No. No, we're not there yet, John, so it's okay, you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> right? The barn is, he was, he's ready, I like that. The barn is not quiet. Even if the animals aren't making any noise, Even if there's nothing else going on, a barn has noise. It's not a silent night. Right? It's not the image of the story that we picture. We picture this image of this manger being there, and when the angel comes to the shepherds, right? You got this guy here. He's like half dressed. Because he's a shepherd, right? He's doing his job, he's out in the field. And, and then the angels come, and he's like, Oh no! <laughs> right? I mean, that's probably what it was. Because what do angels always say? We talked about this earlier, except in, except in Matthew, right? To Joseph. The angels always say, Don't be afraid. And why do angels always say, Don't be afraid? Scary. Probably because they're scary looking. They're not winged creatures that, that are pretty to look at. They're probably quite awe-striking, I will say, to be nice. Um, but the angels appear to these shepherds who we think are right there with the, with the manger. We think that the star came down over top of the manger and the angel appeared there next to it and, they, and, the, and then the shepherds were just there and when they went, they just went right into the manger to be with Jesus and Mary and Joseph. But when I read this tonight, did you listen? Because it actually struck me this week when I looked at this. This was something that I hadn't even seen before. It said, When the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds looked at one another and said, Let us go now to Bethlehem. It's like they weren't there. They were someplace else. Probably just out on a hillside in Bethlehem. Close enough that it was easy for them to get there. They weren't a long way away, but they weren't right there. We think that it's all happening, right? This one spot. That they're there and it's in an instant and they go in. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Something else has struck me this this week as I read this, read this passage again for the umpteenth time, right? The shepherds go in after they make it to Bethlehem and they look at Mary and Joseph and whoever else is there, right? Because it says they went and they found the place where Mary and Joseph and the child was lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known to them what was told to them about this child, right? The angels appeared in the sky and said, born for you this day is the savior of the entire world. That's almost what the angel told told Joseph, right? The angel in the dream told Joseph yesterday, we read it, you will name him Jesus because he will save his people, which his people are just the Jews. But 
now the shepherds come and say he is going to be the savior of the entire world. And when they said this, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. Everyone there was amazed. Who was there? Actually, yeah, I just thought about that. I've, I've preached this sermon three times now, and I just now thought, everybody who was there was amazed. And in the past two, I talked about at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock, I talked about how, how there's at least two people here that should not be amazed because they've been preparing for this now for nine months, right? Mary knew about this. The angel Gabriel came to her and said, you're going to have a child. It's going to be of the Holy Spirit, and it's going to be God, and you're going to name this child Jesus. And then Joseph had a dream at some point in there when Mary finally told him that she was pregnant and they were still supposed to get married. And Joseph went all crazy and the angel came to him in a dream and said, Joseph, it's fine. Mary, Mary. And name the kid Jesus because he's going to save his people. So they've had at least a little bit of time to prepare for this and they should have all of this worked out already. But they're amazed, right? Because it says all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But I wonder, were the other shepherds that were listening, as the other shepherds were telling the story, were they also amazed at this? Because I am completely amazed every time that I think about how God loves me. Because I know that I don't deserve God's love. The things that we do, and the things that we say, and the things that we work, and the way that we live, we don't stand up to what God has called us to be. At the last service, I talked about how I wear a white robe. I didn't wear my robe tonight because I thought it would be in the way of me trying to play. So, But I wear that robe, and the reason that we wear those robes is not because it makes us look better or because we're supposed to do that, because that's the right thing to do. We wear those robes because the same reason why we cover a casket when we have funerals with a pall, because it reminds us that we're, that we're all named and claimed as in our baptism, that we're all God's children. That we've all been claimed by God and named by Him. And it doesn't matter who I am because I am covered with Jesus. And you're not looking at me, you're looking at Christ. And when the angels appeared to those shepherds, those lowly shepherds in the field, and they told them the message of hope, they said, we're giving you good news. What is the good news tonight? She said something. I didn't hear what she said. Though. No, I didn't hear that. I don't think I want to know what she said. I, I don't think you do. The good news tonight is actually this. Right? Not this porcelain figure of this baby in this manger that looks very happy to be here. <laughs> the good news tonight is that Jesus was born. And he came to us in human form. And God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life, which is John 3.16, right? And John 3.17 is just as important. If you don't know it, you need to go home and memorize it. John 3.17 is that God sent his son into the world that the world might be saved through him. God didn't want to condemn us. God sent his son so that we could learn and see what it's like to live as we're supposed to, even though none of us ever will live up to that. This is the good news tonight. And good news... I feel like I've said this before, but I haven't yet this evening. Good news is the word euangelion. Euangelion, which is you, EU, which means good, and the word angelos, which means angel or messenger, right? And the messengers came and told the shepherds that the, the, this great news. And what happened when they told the shepherds about the good news? The shepherds became what? Messengers. And they went and they told Mary and Joseph about what they had heard. And after Mary and Joseph left the stable, they became what? Messengers. As they went and told about the proclamation of their son. And John the Baptist, after he was anointed for, for his ministry, became what? A messenger in the wilderness. And every last one of us is sent and called to be a messenger. 
Oh my gosh, are you awake? There's more of you than that, I know. Messenger. Messenger. We're all called to be angels. You see that? You don't get called that very much, do you? You're an angel. You truly are an angel. Sent, to, sent, sent into this world to help people understand and know who this is. Sent into this world to tell them how much God loves them and loves you because He sent His only Son so that every one of us could have the greatest gift ever. So we could look like the shepherd. Like, I'm not worthy of this. They're your kids. I know, they're my kids. <laughs> So on this night, remember that God sent His Son to come and be born in a manger so that He could fulfill the prophecies of a coming Messiah, Messiah to be the Savior of all the world. And in doing that, He made His way through Jerusalem and to the cross to die, in each, to die for each and every one of us so that we can have a relationship with God the Father. And that is the greatest news of all. And each and every one of you is called and proclaimed to be a messenger of that love, that grace, of that mercy to the world. So hold that dear and be in awe at the wonder of how God takes each and every one of us, whether we think we're worthy or not, and uses us to help everyone see just how much He loves all the world.